Hello and welcome to another episode of my F1 2021 My Team Career Mode, episode number 5 today for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix in Season 1. Spoiler alert for last episode, real quick, we finished in P13 after trying a very, very risky strategy, going for a soft set of tyres in the last 10 laps of the race as a safety car came out. But unfortunately, we didn't get further than P13, and we we're looking good for some points maybe, but unfortunately, not quite. Max Verstappen got his third win in a row already, so that's quite surprising. Uh, he's looking very dominant this season. And we're seeing, of course, in the performance comparison, that Haas is making some good progress still. There's more progress than there usually would be. And it, it has me hoping that we might see Haas actually at the top. But as we look here, then we get 400 free resource points for some engine issues that we apparently had last race. I don't remember those, uh, but we did get 400 points. I'm definitely going to take those as we're going to see about some upgrades. Unfortunately, we just can't do chassis upgrades because we need spec one. So that's something we're going to be working towards. But as I mentioned in the last episode, I want to see if we can hire another driver for uh, the second half of the season. Because of course, we're at episode five right now. And after episode eight, we can hire a new teammate if we want to. And I have put my sights on someone. Um, and I think... I'm, I'm very likely at the moment to hire someone. So then we get also the staff burnout uh, kind of debate thing. Uh, I don't see why you would decline this, honestly. I mean, 50k isn't that much and the 30% boost is really going to help us. So we're going to continue the timeline then. And there's a press interview. And I'm not going to show you this interview because everyone knows what it's like. But I did want to show you this question because it quite surprised me, actually. Because um, if you look at the bottom answer there, you can mention this sort And... I was very confused at the time, I wasn't going to do it at first, but then it says your sponsors give you a bonus, and we've actually gained 100k from answering that question. So that's quite surprising, I'm definitely going to take it. I had to look at the footage, because at first I didn't even see what we got. But we got 100k then for free, so I'm definitely going to take that, no doubt. As you're going to see me do another powertrain upgrade for the fuel efficiency this time, which is going to come in after Azerbaijan, just before the Canadian Grand Prix. And I'm going to do an upgrade on the MG UK, I think, I'm going to do. Or the turbo. No, I'm going to go for the MGUK. Yes, we're going to upgrade the MGUK. And that is going to come in also after Azerbaijan, just before the Canadian Grand Prix. So we're going to continue then. We get a bar sports upgrade. Well, we're supposed to, but it fails. But that's still going to come in before the Grand Prix then, no doubt. Personnel department, quick thing. Uh, either we decline this or we agree it. Well, I'm not going to sacrifice seven experience. Because, of course, for people who don't know, experience is a thing which... Uh, make your teammate earn more resource points during practice and well as you know We really need those resource points and that's also part of the reason we're going to be firing Aitken at the halfway point this season But for now we got to cherish the experience he has left and then we get this kind of weird thing um, I wasn't quite sure what he had more of so we're just going to approach him um, Well, I mean it could have been worse. I guess I don't know. I don't really see what that would change but we do get the barge ports okay, upgrade well, then the and it's time to go to the race weekend let's go to the results of practice the there we are uh i actually failed to do one of my practice programs this time which is quite sad um i don't really have an explanation for it uh i had i was struggling a bit with the driver ai because i go very very well around azerbaijan and i wanted to make sure it was still kind of balanced and therefore i did all the three practice sessions myself but i didn't get to do the final practice program because the uh, the time was kind of fucked because of the driver AI and because of how well I go around here, but I still can't beat the Delta times the game wants me to. It's kind of confusing, I guess. Uh, it makes sense for me, but you really had to be there to see it, but I cut out practice. I didn't even record it, to be fair, so uh, no chance at you seeing that. We are going to gain a bit of a claim that we're reaching closer to the level 10, of course, and... If we get level 10, we can get another sponsor, which is going to help us out massively. But here we are then, once again at the progress history. As you can see here, like I mentioned, Haas is still going very strong. They're almost level with Williams now, and they're going very fast. So maybe we can see them not be at the bottom for once. But let's go to qualifying them for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix, because it's going to be very interesting and a very important one, of course. Because Azerbaijan, as everyone knows, is a street circuit. It's not the hardest street circuit to overtake. I mean, you still have Singapore and Monaco, of course. But it's definitely a hard one. So the qualifying around here is always very important. And there's actually some rain forecast for later in this qualifying. It's going to come in after Q2. Uh, so we got this Q1 session still on the soft. And I actually forgot to switch my engine out. But we're also going to take a new control electronic. Because those have been wearing out very, very fast over the last few races. So already going to be taking a penalty then. 
And the control electronics, of course, if it's worn, it wears out your other components faster. So this is a very important one to take. So we are going to take then 10 place grip penalty already after I just said that qualifying is important. We're just going to try to make the most of it, really. We're just going to see if we can maybe get like P20, P21, if we're lucky. I don't know. It's going to be a tough one. We've got a Mercedes behind us. We're at the end of the first lap then. We're gonna go across the line and let's hope we can make it to Q2 to maybe not be in P22 even though it's very very likely of course as we're still very much a low field team. But it's gonna be P13 then ahead of Russell and Aitken and at the end of this lap when we get back it's gonna be P15 so we're definitely not in the safe zone yet and we are gonna go out for a second lap because I just really don't want to risk it at this point. It's 4 tenths up as we enter the straight and we're still going way faster. We had a better exit so we're gaining a little more time. Not too much though, make sure to activate the DRS at the right time. And it's going to be 0.417 gained, and it's going to be just enough to get through to Q2. It's still in P15, of course we've got the 10 position still, but it might just help us a bit. And Mick Schumacher actually really surprising in P18, showing that the Haas is indeed very much improving as he's faster than Jack Aitken in both of the Williams cars. And of course, not surprising, Mazepin is still in P22. But let's hope that maybe even him can go up a little bit maybe throughout the season or next season even. But here we are then at Q2, the rain is very much forecast, so it went out as fast as possible, so we maybe don't have to struggle with that. We're ahead of Stroll just behind Vettel as we go across the line. We're gonna go back into the box, but we're not even gonna go for a second lap because we don't have another set of soft tires. And of course the rain was coming. So it's gonna be P14 then for us, and with the grid penalty, it is gonna be P22, unfortunately. So we are gonna be all the way at the back of the grid. Bottas is actually out in P11 on his mediums, but let's go to the grid. Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Good afternoon and welcome to Baku. This was the arena, if you think back to 2017, of one of the most eventful races of modern history, with controversy behind the safety car, last second overtakes, and a historic podium for Williams and for Lance Stroll. So let's find out what lies in store for us this year. It's time for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. The Baku city circuit measures roughly six kilometers and is made up of 20 corners and two DRS zones. The circuit winds around the narrow city, through the old town, and even brushes against the city's medieval walls. However, as beautiful as the setting is, this track is also a ferocious technical challenge, where the smallest of mistakes could lead to catastrophic consequences for all of our drivers. Anthony Davidson joins me once again in the commentary box. Ant, it's fantastic to have you with us here today, but I'm curious, as a man with experience out on the track, how do you stop those pre-race nerves from becoming overwhelming when you're lining up on the grid? But from the moment qualifying's over, you start to feel the adrenaline in your body build up and the buzz in your stomach as you anticipate the run down into turn one. It's all a bit like going into battle and the unknown situation makes you nervous. Those pre-race nerves are a good thing. The day you don't have them means that you don't care anymore. And of course, you have to make sure that all the procedures are second nature to you so that they're not taking up too much of your capacity. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. Young superstar Max Verstappen starts from pole position. Sergio Perez lines up alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Hamilton, Gasly, Charles Leclerc and Sainz. Norris, Fernando Alonso, Sonoda, and Valtteri Bottas, Ocon, Vettel, Lance Stroll, and Raikkonen, Giovinazzi, Mick Schumacher, Daniel Ricciardo, and Jack Aitken, Latifi, Mazepin, the Rainmaster, and George Russell ends our grid lineup. Which of these talented drivers will come out on top today? Welcome to the grid then. We're not in P22 surprisingly, we're actually in P21 as George Russell is also taking the penalty and we're gonna go for a very daring kind of strategy actually. We're gonna go for a one stop which isn't very usual around here. We're gonna go for a soft to medium strategy as everyone around us will be going for a two stop. It's gonna be very risky, it's gonna be close. Whether we're gonna go for it actually or we're gonna make a move like we did in Spain. I don't know, we're here for the five red lights for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix and it's lights out and away we go. And a nice replay shot actually for a change. As we approach turn one, we're on the left kind of. We're gonna make a huge dive into turn one, making a little contact with Schumacher actually, but no, no wing damage or anything. We're gonna start up in P17 then, as Aitken is gonna make a massive dive around the inside. It's very dangerous from the Brit there. Yellow flags behind, I don't know why exactly, but they were there. 
We're still in P17 as Aitken overtook us as well. We're gonna look at another cool replay shot. So this is a new style of editing. If anyone has any comments, just leave it down below, I guess. I really enjoy it. We're gonna make a dive around Aitken then into the next turn. We're gonna overtake him nice and easy. As we're going, or approaching the coastal section slowly, which is of course a very dangerous section. A lot of drives have crashed out. Very dangerous. We, I don't really struggle with it. So on to the end of this lap, then onto lap two. We're still behind Schumacher. Aitken gonna try and make a move. We're gonna dive around the inside of the German there. Very dangerous. I make sure we don't have wing damage because that was. I, it felt like I got damage, but apparently we don't. We're all good. There's no wing switches or anything needed. And onto lap five, then we're now side by side with Lance Stroll and the Aston Martin actually, and we're gonna overtake him pretty easily as well into turn one on lap six. Very smooth all, very clean, very well. So, P11 now actually, as a couple of people have made stops. And we're looking very good, because as I said, we're making a one stop. So we're looking very promising. We're going in on lap 9. The tires aren't too worn yet. We do have a very worn gearbox, which is quite worrying. Because we can't change it until after the next race, which is Canada. So maybe we're going to have to take a penalty in Canada as well to buy a new gearbox. I don't know. We'll see next episode, I guess. Um, it's very high, highly worn though, which is... Quite a big issue because I don't want to fail in gearbox, especially not in Canada. This is my favorite track in the entire game for people who don't know yet. But onto lap six, or lap seven actually, there's more and more people in the pits. We're up to P6 now actually, as we're still behind Giovinazzi. We're doing very good here, seeing as we still only need one stop, of course. Now these people are all going to be faster as soon as they get out of the pits. So don't expect myself to actually finish in P6, but you never know, of course. Giovinazzi still ahead. At the end of lap 7, onto lap 8, and he's gonna go into the pits, and you'll see that there's even more as Vettel, just in front of him, is also into the pits. So we're up to P4 now, so we got Max Verstappen, Paris, and Hamilton all in the top 3. They start on medium, so they aren't going in yet. Uh, they will be going in probably around lap 12 or 13. I'm not 100% sure, but we'll see. Um, at the end of lap 9, then, they're already going in, surprisingly. Even though they were on mediums, they're going in already, which is... Kind of weird, actually. Well, we're going in as well, of course. We started on the softs. We've got Leclerc behind already. Schumacher behind that. Because Schumacher started on mediums. So he's actually flying very high with that Haas. He's going to be happy about that one. But we're in for our one and only stop then onto mediums. And from here, it's literally just going to be fighting to keep our position. To not get overtaken. And to try and get some points like we did last episode. It's looking very promising. We are going to drop exit, down exit, very, very far then. All the way up to P21. As we line up just behind George Russell and our teammate again. So we've got a lot of overtaking to do. Of course, these guys are all still going in for a second stop. So they're not our issue right now. But onto the straight here then. Onto turn one again. It's a massive battle between five different cars here. We're gonna... I'm trying to find my way around here. But there's just so much going on. We're gonna make a dive around the inside. Staying just behind Giovinazzi and Russell. But overtaking our teammate and of course Nikita Mazepin. Our teammate does come back at us a little bit. We're going to make him dive again into turn two as we're still behind Giovinazzi and Russell on lap 11 here. Aitken still giving us quite a good fight, but we're on fresher mediums. We've still got ERS that I'm not even using here, and we've got DRS, of course. So we are going to stay just beside him and into the next turn here. Then we are going to make the move um, forever. I don't know. I forgot the word. <laughs> there we are on lap 12, turn one. We're still behind Giovinazzi and Russell. But into turn two, then they're still fighting, so they're already slow. There's yellow flags ahead, actually. We're going to try to make a very, very smooth move. Not quite getting it done, though, so we're still behind. And ahead, there's a McLaren being slowed. Don't let it be Norris. Don't give Norris even more bad luck, please. Okay, good. It's Daniel Ricciardo with an engine failure. He's getting out of the race, then. 21 left. We're still behind Giovinazzi and Russell, actually. It's going on for a very long time now, and it's actually costing me time, of course. We've still got the fresh mediums. We want to make as much time as possible, so we end up in front of as many cars as possible who are on the two-stop and still ahead of us. But they're holding us up massively, so onto lap 13 even, halfway through the race. They are still here, and we're going to make try to make a move at the end of this straight. Then we're very fast, we're going to use ERS, we've got DRS open. Our teammate right behind us still, but he shouldn't be much of an issue, as he is still our teammate, so he's not just going to make a random dive or anything. We are going to make a dive then on the both of Giovinazzi and Russell, and this time we are going to finish the move. So we're going to go into the hairpin. No, not the hairpin. Sorry, chicane. <laughs> As we finish the move. Lap 15 then. We're onto the straight. We've got Raikkonen ahead of us. Four seguntsi Two seconds to Giovinazzi behind. 
We're pretty much in no man's land now. It's just our race. But we see Alonso in the pits, the Clur in the pits, and there's an Alpha Tori with them. The so we're going to overtake three more people up to be 12 now. So we're already close to the points. And we don't need to stop them anymore, like I mentioned. So already getting close to the points. Lap 16 then. I expect even more stops as we've gained half a second to Raikkonen ahead. We're putting green sectors now that we no longer are behind Russell and, right and Giovinazzi. Sorry. There's five more cars in, a sixth one even, I think the Ferrari is in as well. Yes, the Ferrari of Science is also in. P7 now, as we slot up behind Science, he, we're no way, no way that we're going to overtake him. He's on newer mediums and of course the faster car. But it's P6 then on lap 18 as the safety car is coming out. And genuinely, I don't know why, I couldn't find anything in the replays. The safety car is out though. We're in P6, and this might actually screw us over, because of course we're on old mediums. Everyone behind and ahead is on fresh ones. This might cost us a lot of positions as we're in P6 right now, but it's going to be very weird. Um, on to lap 22 then, we're behind the Clur signs, and everyone has pretty much slotted up now, so... It's going to be a 3-4 three, three to four lap sprint race, really, trying to keep our position. Not losing too much, and there's smoke ahead! We've got a smoking engine right in front of us during the safety car, it's Carlos Sainz DNFing. Um... That's very unfortunate for him, but it is fortunate for us because we're up into P5 now. That's going to make us a little easier for us to get points today. But uh, yeah, Sainz is here, then going to be retiring. But what is he doing? He's going to the right. No, 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 no. What? Oh my god, he's made contact with the Haas there. Oh my god, who is that? I think it's Mazepin, isn't it? Yeah, it is Mazepin. Mazepin with the damage there. He's got a broken front wing, he's gonna have to pit, but to be fair, it is massive, and he was probably already gonna finish in P22, of course. But lap 22, then the safety car is now coming in, we're in P5, we've got a massive fight ahead of us for the, th for the points. Three to four laps to go. And we are looking very good, very strong, and we might actually have a good shot at some points here today. So I'm on my top, I'm trying to get the best restart possible, of course. As we're going to try to stay as close to Leclerc as possible, but also keeping an eye on not going too fast. And of course, not making contact with him first and foremost. But also to have quite a good restart. And I think I did pretty good here. I suddenly felt Leclerc pulling away, as you can see here. So, I think I did pretty well. And we're catching up to him, actually. Staying in the slipstream. And we're going on the inside in turn one, actually. We're going to make a move on Leclerc. And we're going to make a massive dive on Lewis Hamilton, even. I'm definitely not proud of that one. We're in the, po in the podium now, actually. So we're in P3. The, the, I mean, the Red Bulls are just going to pull away. It's the fastest car on track right now. And to be fair, we are in no shape to catch up with them. But we've got Lewis Hamilton on our left hand. He's going to try to overtake the position into this turn. He's not quite going to finish the move. Because, we're of course, we're, we are giving him the space. We actually made some contact. So he loses the back end a bit. And... He's back to fighting with Leclerc for now as he's outside of the second, but of course he is still in the Mercedes, he's still in the fresher tire. So on lap 24 here, then he's gonna try and make a move again on us, and he is still very much here. Okay, we're once again gonna give him the space, and he's once again gonna slot behind for now, as we're approaching the chicane again then ahead of us here. It's... I'm trying, I'm fighting my lungs out pretty much. I really want these points, and the podium would be even more awesome of course. But, as I said, I go very well around Azerbaijan, so I'm definitely not surprised to be this high up. We've got Lewis Hamilton on our right now, on the inside, approaching the castle section. He is going to take the position, and I'm just going to slot up behind him for now, because I do not want to go into the castle section with a fight. It's just, there's really no point, it's only dangerous. So we are going to let him go, then Lewis Hamilton is going to be driving away, of course, still in Mercedes, fresher tire. But now we've got Leclerc behind us, then on the end of lap 24, the third sector. We're using ERS... We're trying to go as fast as possible so he doesn't catch up to us. We aren't going to have DRS though on the next straight, so he is going to be on our right here. As we kind of low-key pinch him off, it's not too bad, but he's still there. He's on our right. It's a very nice little fight into turn one then. As Alonso is also now right behind us, it's going to be three wide into turn one actually. This is, this is amazing scenes really in Baku. You don't really see this a lot. But into turn two then, they're still behind us. Alonso is now actually overtaking Leclerc. And he's making a very, very dangerous dive bomb as he's, well, he's hurt his front wing, first of all. We, he's, he's falling back now, he's just, he's gone. It's the end of lap 25 then, third sector. He is still there, but he is going to be pitting for a new front wing. Because he does have too much damage to keep going. Um, even though it's only one lap. 
Um, and Lefleur is now on our left. He's once again going to try to make a move, of course. It's still very risky for us. I really want these points, so we're using all the ERS we got. And we are actually behind him. I'm going to make a very, very dangerous move around the outside in turn one. Because we're getting a better exit, we are going to come out ahead of him then. And turn two is also going to be for us onto the next straight as he's still behind. He's falling a little bit behind because I think we hit the curb. So we slowed down a bit and had to make him break, kind of. Uh, but he is still there and he's going to dive around the inside again as we're going to, of course, give him the space because I'm a cool driver. But he's still not going to come out as we do get a, quite a good exit. But he's actually very, very fast. So we have to cut a curbs and kind of pinch him off there. I think we made some contact. I wasn't quite sure. It felt like I did. We're on the last lap then. It's a last lap fight with the Leclerc for P4. Tsunoda in P6 outside of the second. So it's not very likely that he's going to catch up to us. But you never know what happens in the final turns, of course. As we're approaching the castle section one last time then. Leclerc still right, right, right behind us. I really hope we can keep this P4 because these points are massive. We really need 12 points right now for the championship, of course. Until lap 26 then. At the end, Max Verstappen is going to come out to win the Grand Prix. Perez right behind, actually. He's going to try to make a move even, but he's he's not, not close enough. So Max Verstappen is going to win the race. If it was one more lap, maybe Perez could have taken it, but that's not the case now. Max Verstappen is taken, and here we are then, still in P4, Leclerc behind, he's not close enough, P4 is going to be ours, 12 points in the Azerbaijan Grand Prix, it's huge, 3 wide once more, now with the Alfa Tori though, rather than the Alpine, but this is massive for us, these are some massive points, it is looking very good, and I wonder what we're gonna do in Canada next race, of course, because I still also go very well, we had a very well-deserved driver of the day, of course, because remember, we started in P21, so... Jesus, we went from 21 to 4. But let's go to the podium, and let's celebrate this one, because it is definitely worth it. Anthony Davidson, how do you think they were able to set themselves apart today? It was a question of right place, right time today. We were looking at an entirely different race before the safety car came out, but they were able to take full advantage after the field had been bunched up. Red Bull put up an outstanding fight for the front position today and it's great to see it paid off for them. They do so much for the sport that you can't help but be delighted by today's race win. Max was right, here we are then at the standings. Jack Aitken got P14 actually. Aston Martin being quite uh, quite disappointing actually with only one point in P10. And we've got the Haas of Mick Schumacher in P18. So he did lose two positions but still very surprising for the Haas to be this high up. Mazepin of course very surprising in last. And we've got the Alfa Romeo of Kimi Raikkonen actually in P12. So he's doing very well. And the Norris being quite a bit disappointing in comparison to last race of course. He had the very disappointing first three races but in the standings then we're going back up into p6 we are pulling our car surprisingly high and we're also going to p6 in the constructor standings as i think we overtake both alpine and aston martin in the rivalry of nicholas latifi we're gaining even more points i'm pretty sure we're going to be winning this one especially with canada also coming up we are going to go to acclaim level nine then with the team so we are getting so close so fast to that next sponsor but not quite I hope at the end of next episode we are going to get 144k for Distort then. Because even though we didn't finish the third one, I think we did get the achievement because I did gain some development boost thingies, discounts. We're on 3.95 million then, and that's almost... Well, it would be enough to get a new teammate. But we are going to see then. I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you for watching. Leave a like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.